Okay, last time we met, I had screwed this thing up. This uh, is the Psycho LFO from Cat Girl Designs, uh, one of uh, Ken Stone's boards, meant to go into a modular uh, synth, which we are working on while we wait for our uh, modal 002 to return from Sweetwater Sound, which I believe I'm going to get it tomorrow. So uh, we'll do a vid about that when we get it. But meanwhile, this bad boy, I had put an SN74HC... Uh, 14 T in there and it burned up. So uh, today, um, just to have something to do, I'm going to put the right one in there. I've got an. A I ordered one from Mouser. Got the right component. We're going to put it in that slot and we're going to see what this thing does. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so what do we got here? Let's see if I focus on that. So Mouser Electronics. We got a part number here. Uh, Heck Schmidt Trigger. Schmidt, Schmidt Trigger. CD40106BE, which is what we need. And let's just open this up. And this is the way these things go, right? So what you're going to do is, when you want to build one of these modular kits yourself, you, you buy the board. I think I told you last time I got these boards from um, SynthCube. And I uh, got the bare board went to Ken Stone's site and I got the parts list from Ken Stone. I populated the board, which is just a lot of soldering. And you know, I solder a lot on these videos, so you don't need to watch me solder anymore. I don't think anyway, it's all, I don't think it's all that fun. Okay, so here's a, these chips come in tubes. As I said, I tend to buy them in groups of 10. Turns out if you buy one, it costs X. And if you buy 10, it's like X plus $1. I mean, it's not, a whole lot worse to buy 10 and you wind up paying 10 bucks for shipping or so so they come in these tubes and sometimes there's something stuck in the end so they don't come out and this time there's not and it's just kind of bent in there so they bend that in there and they don't come out all right so we got the one chip there and put that away and turn on the soldering iron and let's see, here it is, right here. And let's see, uh, let's see if I can, I got some light here from the microscope. Let's see if that helps any. And let's see if some focus helps any. Yes, there we go. And there we go, we can see uh, this bottom number here, it's a CD40106. Okay, and we're gonna put it into uh, this slot right there. That's where this is going to go. So typically what you wind up having to do is uh, the pins, as you can see, they wind up being bent outward a little bit, like a, like a V, which means they're not going to go in straight. So what I usually do is I just bend them on the table slightly. There are professional IC bender thingies, and you know what? I don't think I've ever used one in my life. I always do this, bend it against a nice non-conductive surface, and then be sure to insert it so that the little U matches the U there. Sometimes there's a dot, sometimes there's a dot on the upper left, which is indicates pin number one. So that would be the same thing as the upper left here. And we must pop it into this spot there. Okay, and there's the back. Now I'm going to try to solder it by remote control because the camera is between me and the soldering iron. So seeing as how I'm a semi-pro solderer, I'm going to try to do it from a distance. What I would say, folks, is don't try this at home. Make sure you're, uh, well, let's see, let's get that under the light. It might look better if it's under this light right here. Okay, I think that's in focus. Focus, 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 all right. Now I'm going to get my soldering iron. Try to keep my hands out of the way. Can you, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that. This, it'll be, and so there I've got the first pin soldered. And usually what I do then is now that i got one pin soldered and it's stable, I'll just tap it in, hold it in while I, while I loosen that, uh, while I heat that up and then it'll pop right into place, which it has. 
And now I'm going to try to solder the rest. Now you may wonder, how did I get the other one out? I used a desoldering tool, which I have featured on other videos. And let me just... Uh, now my eyes aren't all that good from this distance. I think again. Right, there we go. As I've said, you guys have seen me solder plenty of times in the past. I'm soldering now from a distance of about two or three feet. I'm not using my microscope, which I could be using. Hmm, how does that look? Let me take a look. Can't see a darn thing. All right. Let's check it out. Mm, well, there's a bit of flux in there, but generally speaking, probably, probably will just take a look under the microscope. Oh, I missed a pin. You guys didn't warn me. I missed a pin. I missed two pins. I missed two pins. Good thing I looked. All right, we're gonna get the soldering iron. Missed this pin right here, and this one down here. Yeah, there's the phone. Might have to go get the phone. And while we're together this fine this fine evening, I thought I'd point out. So I've got this. Uh, I showed you this last time. The Synthtech. Uh, MOTM 300 Ultra VCO board. I did get another board also from uh, SynthCube and uh, I started populating it. Uh, I've got a thing for VCOs. I tend to, I don't know, I tend to like VCOs. As you can see, there's a lot of spaces missing. There's pieces that are coming in from Jameco and Mouser. Um, again, what you do is you buy the board. The parts list for this is available at www.synthtech.com. Just look at his website. And uh, he's got the parts list for this in a complete manual on how to build it. And we'll be building this out. And I might be transferring parts. Even though this board works, it's kind of hacked up, as you can see. I'll probably be transferring parts from this, this board to this new board, which just fell. Thank God they're unbreakable by falling. So I'll be transferring some parts to there, probably. Um, these Spectral... Um, Pots are some of the most expensive things to get. I think they want about 15 bucks a piece for, for them now. I found them, uh, the ones I've got here, I actually found at a uh, surplus store uh, for 50 cents a piece, and I bought oh, about 50 of them. Uh, if you try to get them off of Mouse or, or DigiKey, um, 100K Spectral uh, is going to go for about 15 bucks a piece. So. I think I may salvage them off this board. Again, even though this board works, I, I this one's going to be a much cleaner build. So I may take you through that. But meanwhile, the next thing I want to do is uh, pop on uh, some power on this guy, plug in all the things we built last, last time, and let's see if it, uh, if it goes. You would think that a man of my sophistication and intelligence would have a better way to set this up and to lean it on this corner of a table like this with... Wires coming out, going every which way. Power supply underneath. Um, I guess uh, it just goes to prove that uh, um, brains ain't everything, or maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe something else. I don't know. At any rate, here's the uh, here is the output of the thing, and as you can see, I guess it follows its name. Uh, psycho LFO so it is LFOing and I can turn these knobs and I guess a variety of different things happen um, let me uh, try to do this with that whoa whoa now we got now well, we got really crazy things happening there we go I just lowered the uh, I increased the uh, range here and let's see if I turn one, I'll see what this one does. Not sure what that one does, and I'm actually not quite sure what this one does either. But it is psycho. Uh, that's not like any L LFO I've ever seen. Let me uh, turn it around that way. Nope. That is certainly um, 
doing something odd, which is, I guess, what it's set up to do. There we go. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. You get a little square wave action out of that, and that's not that's clipping uh, probably at the 15 volt level, because I got five volts for division, so it's going to clip there anyway. Um, but wow, wow, that's wild. Now, what what he suggests is that if you want, you can change the value of some of these resistors and get a different uh, output. Um, you know, with your with your uh, modular synth really depends on what kind of wacky music you want to make, how much randomness you want to add to it. Um, I kind of like the way it is now. See, look at that. That is that is really cool. I don't know what it's doing. Uh, don't ask me what it's doing. I don't know. But it looks cool. So there you go. There's the output of the Psycho LFO. Now it's ready to be put uh, onto a plate and mounted onto a uh, uh, with a panel and slid into the... Uh, slid into the modular so uh, what i'm going to do though is i'll probably team this up with another one because this, this board is so small and it's only got three pots i'll probably add something else to it uh, and put both of them on the same panel any rate uh, thanks very much for watching appreciate your patronage and uh, hope you got some fun out of this and if i can help you with anything drop me a line i'm joe talk to you later